right as the game was getting good, Joe Burrow has a wrist injury. You pan to him on the sidelines. He's trying to throw the football. He then realizes he can't. He falls down, walks off into the locker room, and you knew Joe Burrow wasn't going to return to the game. I was even thinking when it played out, remember we talked about this yesterday, the photo of him coming off the bus or the team plane as they were traveling to Baltimore and it zoomed in and you see this bandage that was on his wrist and he wasn't on the injury report. So it was, oh, let's monitor it and let's see if this has a real impact on the game and if this is going to be a story. And then during the game, it did become a story because he suffered a further injury. So when you see him leave the game last night, I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe Burrow misses a few weeks and let's see if the Bengals survive. And now they're back at 5-5 five and five after losing the game last night. But a few moments ago, you get the breaking news, which I'm sure many of you are aware that this happened. If you're not, well, if you're a Bengals fan, I say uh, my apologies. And that's why I say it's a somber football Friday because Joe Burrow is one of my favorite quarterbacks, my favorite people uh, in the NFL. And uh, Joe Burrow is now out for the season due to the right injury that he suffered on the uh, right wrist injury on Thursday night. And it's a torn ligament, and it's likely to require surgery. So now it's the Jake Browning show for the Cincinnati Bengals, unless they go get Matt Ryan out of the broadcast booth. I saw that Joe Flacco was working out for the Cleveland Browns. Who would have ever thought we'd see that? Maybe he then reroutes that plane and goes to Cincinnati. Uh, So we'll see what the Bengals do from here. But it is wild how quickly you could go from a team being back and a team looking like they were getting back into Super Bowl form to then, boom, your season's over, poof, your season just now fades away into the air. Because that's what has happened here in the last three weeks with the Cincinnati Bengals. Coming off two awesome wins, really three awesome wins against the Seahawks, the 49ers, and the Bills. They were thriving. They were moving back to the right direction. They won four games in a row, and it's like, okay, they survived the early injury scare to start the season with Joe Burrow. Then you have that back-and-forth game on the seesaw ride against the Texans, and we know last night they ended up losing 34-20 to to the Ravens, but the loss is so much bigger then, oh, you just lost a football game, and now you even up that record in the craziness of the chase to the to the AFC playoffs and the seven teams that make it because now you don't have the quarterback for the rest of the season. And you could argue, out of all the teams in the NFL, the most valuable player to his team and to his franchise is Joe Burrow. Now, you could just make as easy of that argument for Patrick Mahomes. We've seen Mahomes get hurt twice in the playoffs. And we've seen Chad Henney, right, complete that throw to Tyree Kill to beat the Browns in the playoff game. We saw Mahomes get hurt last year in the playoffs as well. But you look at Burrow, year one as a rookie, he gets in there, starts to play well, and then tears his ACL. Then year two, which is really his first true year as a starter from start to finish, they go to the Super Bowl. Last year, banged up, they get through that, And we know they go to an AFC championship game. And then this year, injured to start the season with the calf injury, finally starts to get healthy. And then you start to deal with the wrist injury. And this wrist injury ends up getting really bad where you have a torn ligament. And now you're going to need season ending surgery. So as long as Burrow's on the field, this team has the look of a Super Bowl contender. This team has the look of a force And a dominant team, not only inside the AFC, but the entirety of the NFL. And now that evaporates into the thin air because Joe Burrow's done for the season. And we could play this game of who are they going to bring in. And unfortunately, we've had to play this game a lot this year. Aaron Rodgers with the Jets, with the torn Achilles. We just played it earlier in the week with Deshaun Watson, who's out for the season uh, with the shoulder injury. And now Joe Burrow with the torn ligament in his right wrist. So we have played this game. Who could you pick up? Who's going to come out of retirement? And usually when that happens, you are going down a road where there's nowhere to go, and you know there's a dead end, and you have to stick with the guy that's in your locker room. And Jake Browning was fine last night. You know, he didn't light the uh, the world on fire, but he looked competent at times. 
but he's not Joe Burrow. And even though this defense is really damn good, led by Lou Anarumo and Trey Hendrickson, and on offense, I know T. Higgins was out last night, but you have a ton of pieces in Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. The list goes on and on and on. You could have a great team. You could have the looks of a dominant team. But if you're without your quarterback, you're SOL. And not every team and not every situation a has the proper backup quarterback in place to survive, but can function also without their quarterback. You know, when you see Phil Sims go down and Jeff Hostetler takes over and wins a Super Bowl, that's usually an anomaly. When Drew Bledsoe goes down and this kid Tom Brady gets onto the field and wins a Super Bowl in year number one, those are rare occurrences. Carson Wentz, thriving in Philly, playing like the MVP. And then he gets hurt. They had the right backup in Nick Foles who went on a magical run. But nine times out of 10, and I guess you could say the same with Kurt Warner too, but nine times out of 10, you lose your quarterback with how important the quarterback position is in this sport, your season's over, your season's done. And it's not as if the Bengals, like the Eagles did a few years ago, were on their way to the number one overall seed. Were so far in front of the pack that they were going to have home field advantage. They were going to have a bye After that game last week against the Texans, there were legitimate concerns if the Bengals could still bounce back. And last night when I looked at that spread, and trust me, I did not win a lot of money last night. The three anytime touchdown bets I had, eh, 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 and no, that's not your emergency alert test system, so I don't want to alarm anybody. But I had Mark Andrews anytime touchdown, hurt. Lamar Jackson anytime touchdown. He gets hurt in the game and then returns. And then I also had Jamar Chase, who did not find the end zone. So when you go through those three bets, they did not hit. But the one bet that I did also make in addition to that was laying three and a half points. Or excuse me, the Jamar Chase touchdown did hit at the end of the game. I forgot he scored that touchdown right at the end. So one of those three bets hit. And then laying the three and a half points with Baltimore, you just looked at that line. I thought they were begging you, absolutely begging you to plus the three and a half with the Bengals. That's what I thought they were begging to do. And once I saw that, I said, man, the Ravens are going to win the game. And the Ravens end up winning the game by 14 points. So you take a glance when you lose your quarterback. And you not only lose your quarterback, but you're already dug so deep into a hole. It's very tough to climb out of it. And that's what the Bengals have. Where it feels like right now, and I can't expect Jake Browning to do anything. Even though he looked fine in the game last night, it does appear like the Bengals season is over. And even if they find a way to make the playoffs, what damage are you going to do come postseason time? Because the Bengals are one of the few teams in the NFL where they have Super Bowl or bust expectations. So just making the playoffs is not good enough for the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, if they make the playoffs with Jake Browning as their quarterback, it would be a big accomplishment. And we'll see how great of a coach Zach Taylor is. We'll see how the rest of the team responds. But I do believe this team checks out Because mentally, you go from, okay, we're just getting back into it. Okay, we're just starting to move in the right direction. And then, boom, in a snap of a finger, your quarterback is done for the season. Not only your quarterback, the team's heartbeat, the team's pulse, and the team's leader. And they're scheduled the rest of the way. You still got to play the Steelers, which we know the Steelers have a great defense, no offense. You still got to play Jacksonville, who's a good team, not a great team. You got to play the Colts, eh. Play the Vikings, trending in the right direction. Steelers again. Then you have Kansas City and the Browns to wrap up the season. That's a tough, that's a tough schedule, especially with that division. So I just don't see the path now. I just don't see the road for the Bengals to make the playoffs. And you look at it right now, Chiefs, Ravens, Jaguars, Dolphins, Steelers, Browns, Texans will be your seven playoff teams. And when you look at the rest of everybody, Colts are five and five. Raiders are five and five. Bengals are five and five. Bills are five and five. And you still give life to the Chargers, Jets, and Broncos somehow, who are all four and five. So you have a mixture of teams that you're really splitting hairs for that final wild card spot, let's say. And now you take the Bengals' most important player off the field. And circling back to injuries, it was impossible last night when 
you see the aftermath of the Burrow situation, and now you look at it that way. In addition to, you see Lamar Jackson, and Lamar Jackson is having an MVP quality season. Lamar Jackson, if the award was given out tomorrow, would either be him or C.J. Stroud winning the league's most valuable player. But the Ravens as a team, in addition to Lamar, are playing kick-ass football. And it does still feel like they could be better. That defense is dominant. But offensively, Mitchell's playing well. Gus Edwards finds the end zone. It stinks that Mark Andrews is now done for the season because he is a big-time imperative role to that team. But as of late, Zay Flowers, who's having a solid rookie season. You see Odell Beckham Jr. starting to come alive the last few weeks. This is a team that I still think there's another level. And with all that being said, they're 8-3. and three. And they could still get better. But with all that being said, just like as we've seen with Joe Burrow, that could end rather quickly. 